Today, I'm taking a deeper look at a few of the hands I played in my latest online poker tournament. Now, reviewing your hands after a session without any of the in-game pressures can really help you see what you did well, more importantly, where you went wrong. Now, to help me reach my goal of playing in Las Vegas against the best players in the world, I really need to start studying the game, and this is the beginning of that journey. Now, if you want to see the full highlights of this tournament as they happened, I'll put a link in the description below, but for now, let's get straight into it. Strange little hand this. I thought I was being quite clever and my play should have worked, but maybe I'm wrong. Under the gun plus one opens the pot. It's folded to the small blind who re-raises. Now I'm on the big blind with King Jack off and I make the call. I'm figuring my stack makes it worth seeing a flop with two Broadway cards. Under the gun plus one makes the call too and we get the flop which is 10-3-3 three, three with two diamonds. So I've got two overs and some backdoor draws. Now the small blind C bets, I make the call and the under the gun comes along too. Turn is the five of spades and the small blind checks to me. So my first thoughts here are what is he raising from the small blind with? In game I put him on some sort of hand, maybe similar to mine, or something like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, something like that. I'm happy to see that according to GTO wizard, I'm fairly spot on here, he should be raising with pocket eights plus and the majority of these Broadway hands. I don't think that he'd be checking with an over pair on the turn, so some sort of combination of the over cards that missed the flop is what I'm putting him on. Now the under the gun plus one player didn't re-raise pre or on the flop, so I'm ruling over pairs out of his range too. Maybe he's got some sort of 10x or diamond draw. Now I think I've got most of the threes in my range from the big blind. Especially if the small blind had just called pre, I can basically call with all suited threes, so I've got a ton of them. That's my logic, so I bet, and I'm going to go big. I'm trying to get them to fold their over cards or their flush draws. No joy though, under the gun shoves all in for just another 11 big blinds to me. I don't get it. The only thing that makes any sense to me is pocket tens, but that's pretty unlikely. I'm getting such a good price, I've got to call. He's got absolutely no fold equity there. And I know I've got to be screwed. I'm just not sure how yet. So I make the call and he shows 8-8 eight, eight of diamonds for the nut flush draw. That's a crazy play in my opinion. He's risking his entire tournament life on a draw when I'm showing to be pretty strong here. And like I said, he's got no fold equity at all because I've got to call here with there being so much in the middle. The river is a brick. He ends up winning a monster pot with ace high. Now, I came away from this hand slagging him off like no one would believe because how could he possibly make that call? It's just madness to me. I was thinking that my line made sense and should have got a flush draw to fold. When I came to look at this in GTO Wizard though, I see that I've got an, such an easy fold preflop once the small blind re-raises. And if I just get out of there when I should, I could have saved myself the 40 bigs that I wasted. It's evidence that I need to work on my preflop strategy. Before we go too far, you've got to bear in mind that this hand comes straight after the last one and I am on tilt. <laughs> the hijack opens and the cut off three bets. Got a little less respect for his raise after the way he's been playing recently. It seems like he's just trying to play as a position aggressively and so could potentially be exploited. I've got pocket fives and I think that a shove could get him to fold a lot of the junk that I'm putting him on. Now the preflop charts on GTO Wizard suggest that he shouldn't have a whole lot of junk in, in there though. So my logic is hugely flawed. Anyway, I do shove, the hijack folds and the cutoff has a little think before making his call. He turns over ace five off suit. Going back to his preflop range, ace five off is nowhere near his three betting range. It should have been a fold there and then. And secondly, once I have shoved all in on the button, it's a no brainer, definitely a fold. As we know though, he doesn't do that and he makes the call. The poker gods reward him for his out of the box thinking with an ace on the flop. Now, before I go too far down the road of insults and self-pity that I want to, I do need to take a look at my own preflop play. Once he's three bet from the cutoff, the range that I should continue with, let alone shove with, shrinks considerably. Pocket fives is nowhere near there. And even though both of us made mistakes preflop according to GTO, by the way, one mistake for me, two for him, 
only one is punished to the max and uh, only one person's ejected from the tournament. Me. Even more evidence that my pre-flop play is shocking. So I've mentioned it a few times already, GTO Wizard. Now that's the tool that I'm using to review these hands here today. It's a fantastic way of going over hands you've played to see what you did well, more importantly, where you went wrong to help you win more in the future. Now, if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, use the link in the description below for a 10% discount on all new accounts. In this one, I open the pot pre-flop with eight six of diamonds from the hijack. Small blind calls and we go to the flop. Now, he could be slow playing a monster here, but I think we can write off a lot of his big hands because he would have just three bet them pre. Now, the flop comes ace, 10, two, all hearts. Not a great flop for my hand, but potentially good for my range. I should be opening with lots of suited combos as well as a lot of the cards around Broadway. So this flop should hit me pretty hard. Now, because of that, I decide in game to, to see bet and I go for about half pot. GTO Wizard doesn't totally hate this idea and says I can do it on occasion, but my sizing was bad. I need to bet smaller. A small bet still gets rid of anything that's totally missed the flop, and that's all I'm really trying to do here with 8-6 suited. Now the turn is the ace of clubs. Makes it a little less likely that he has an ace, but I still can't 100% rule it out. I do want to carry on showing strength. I think I'd do that if I had an ace without a heart, so I bet again for half pot. This time GTO Wizard agrees with my bet size some of the time, but mainly likes to check. Now, I've always hated doing this because I think it lets my opposition bet hard on the last card after they've sensed some weakness and it denies me the opportunity to follow through on my bluff on the river. Based on what I'm seeing here, though, it's probably the way, wrong way of thinking and potentially I need to change that. The small blind would be continuing with any ace, obviously, any flush, as well as any flush draw with a big heart in his hand. So he does make the call. Now, the river is the ace of diamonds. Again, it's checked to me and I... I can't show down 8-6. If he's flopped a flush here, he's got to be worried about me having quads or a full house. Some sort of 10x probably calls, but not sure too many of them make it this far. I don't think many people would be able to resist betting the river if they had the ace in their hand, so I don't think he's got that either. I go for the bet and decide on half pot again, wanting it to look like I'm milking him. He pretty quickly makes the call and shows king nine hearts for the flop nuts. He obviously didn't want to fold it, even though the board got worse and worse for him as time went by. Checking it with GTO Wizard, and I think I sort of had the right idea, but I'm not sure. It says that I should be betting on the river with 8-6 of diamonds, but I should have gone all in instead of the half pot bet size I chose. Maybe this would have got him to fold, because again, according to GTO Wizard, King Nine of Hearts is a fold to an all in, but the smaller the size, the more often he has to call. So it is great knowing I was on the right lines here, just apart from the bet sizing. The confusing thing to me, though, is while 8-6 of diamonds is supposed to be a shove on the river, 8-6 of clubs shows us mainly a check back and give up. I'm very new to all this GTO wizard stuff, and I'm finding it really helpful, and it's, it is a great learning tool. I'm just not sure why there's such a difference there, though. Has anyone got any ideas? In this hand, I'm opening from the low jack with king-queen off suit. Now, the cutoff clicks it back and makes a very small raise. It folds back to me, and I don't want to get crazy out of position, but I do want to see a flop with these cards, so I make the call. Now, the flop's not terrible, but it's not great either. Ace, queen, three, rainbow. I've got second pair with a good kicker, but obviously the ace being out there is scary. Now, I make a pretty standard check to the aggressor, and surprisingly, they check behind me. I don't really know what to make of that. I was assuming I was going to be calling a c-bet on this flop, and looking at his potential range, the button player is supposed to be continue betting with nearly everything that they've got here. But he doesn't, so we get the turn, which is the five of hearts. It should be a total brick and nothing to worry about. So I could bet here, but I think it could leave me in a tricky situation on the river if he calls. And if he raises me, I've basically just thrown chips away. So I make the check, and it turns out, potentially, this is the right thing to do. So the button now puts in a delayed C bet and bets half pot. Now, I'm not worried about the five, and in game, I'm 100% convinced that they would have bet the flop with any ace that they've got in their hand. So I make the call. Now, the river is the ace of spades, making it even more unlikely that he's got an ace, and it makes me more confident that my queen is good. I don't want them to just check behind, though, with pocket tens or jacks or something. 
So I put in a tiny bit of 20% pot. The button pretty much snap shoves all in having me covered and I really don't love it, but for the life of me, I can't see what I'm losing to. I make the call and GTO Wizard seems to suggest that it was the right thing to do. I was also right thinking that he didn't have an ace. He actually had two of them and he's rivered quads. Not bad. He played the hand well. I can't deny that. But when I do run it through GTO Wizard, I think I played it okay too. I should have checked the river, then I could have folded to his shove. But if he puts in anything less than all in, and I'm actually supposed to call a huge amount of the time anyway, I never for a second thought he'd have pocket aces. But when I review it, the main hands he checks back with are pocket aces, kings, and queens all of which I'm obviously losing to. Put that together with the tiny raise preflop that was never designed to make me fold, and maybe I should have given Pocket Rockets more careful consideration 